Hey guys, it's Courtney. I am very excited to be guest designing for Newton's Nook for the month of June. Today I'm going to be using Newton's Movie Night stamp set and I'm going to be creating somewhat of a one layer card here. So I'm going to start off first by stamping out my image on the bottom portion of a piece of Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock. I am using my Misty here because this is a larger image and I know I'm gonna to have to stamp this a ton of times. I am using Blackout Ink by Ink on 3 because it is a Copic Safe ink. And like I said, gonna stamp this right on the bottom portion of my card, which will eventually, once everything is said and done, kind of look like the front part of the movie theater. Also going to stamp this onto a piece of Eclipse masking paper and I'll fussy cut that out. I'm gonna have to create a few different masks for this card, but this is the only one that I'm going to have to cut out the entire image. The rest, I'll just have to worry about the top portion. So I will go ahead and stamp or mask that out rather, and I have a little bit of a blank space on either side of my image. So I want this to appear as if there is just a bunch of seats in a movie theater all lined up. So in order to stamp the rest of this row of seats, I guess, I'm going to actually bring out my acrylic block just because the stamp was just a little bit too large for the Missy. And I'm just needing a little portion of the image. So I'm going to just use my acrylic block and also create a mask for these as well. Now eventually, I am going to be able to reuse these masks, but when I'm first starting out, because the image is so large, I'm going to have to cut quite a few masks as I go along. But like I said, I'm only gonna have to cut out a portion of them. I'm not really too concerned about having my masks absolutely perfect at this point. So once that was done, I am gonna go ahead and mask those two little cats and in, in their little movie seats there on either side and then I'm going to start stamping all the way to the top portion of my panel or all the way to the back of the movie theater I should say. So I'm using what I used is the little paws on the one little cat that's covering his eyes as my guide as far as how far to stamp up but I'm kind of lining up the seats as if they're kind of diagonal from one another like a no normal movie theater would be if that makes any sense to you guys. But I just picked like something from that image that I could use as a guide each and every time so that they're pretty much spaced evenly throughout the entire card. I just used the pause and just put those right on the top portion of the seat in front of the ones I'm stamping. I really hope that makes sense to you guys. But as you can see, I am creating masks or even more masks as I go along, just making sure that I'm cutting the top portion because that's really the only part that I have to mask at this point. Because this is such a large image, you'll see that I keep rotating my paper around. I'm flipping it on its side. I am using my magnet each and every time because I don't want this to shift. Most of the time I did stamp this twice just because of the size of the image. Now I'll continue to move this around and stamp and you'll see that I did clean off my stamp each and every time and I'm not sure if you guys can see it on camera but not every single time was my stamp completely dry. It was clean but it wasn't completely dry and I got some water spots on my card panel. For this particular card, I'm not too concerned about it. I wouldn't be too concerned about it with any card, to be honest with you. I would typically let that dry before I continued my stamping, and then I should have no problem. Being I plan on Copic coloring this entire image, and for the most part using fairly dark colors, I'm not concerned if it warps the paper just a little bit, or not warps it, but kind of leaves a spot there. I'm going to be able to color, cover that up with my coloring anyway. So again, not too concerned. So here I'm gonna go ahead and continue stamping up and now I am going to reuse some of the masks I have already created. So I'm going to kind of lift up the rest of my masks here and kind of pick them up from the bottom. Now, because we stamped over them so many times, 
it's going to kind of be a little bit more difficult to line up because you're not going to necessarily see that original image that we had but it's not really that hard because these are pretty basic shapes anyway so like i said worked my way all the way up to the card panel or all the way up to the top of the card panel as if it is the back of the movie theater and you can see this panel is full of images, lots and lots to color. So we're gonna jump right into the Copic coloring next. So I'm not gonna show you all of the coloring here because it did take quite a bit of time and I have this sped up a little bit. But I'm going to start off with the seats that these little characters or these little cuties are sitting in. And for the rest of the card, I actually did the seats last, which if I had to do it again, I would do the seats last in the front as well. But just to kind of show you how I colored these, I'm starting off with the C7 and basically just outlining my outlining Newton because he would be casting a shadow onto the seat. Then I'm going to go in with my C7 and I'm just going to make that outline just a little bit thicker, going directly over that C7 and making that extending it out a little bit further. Doing the same thing with the C3 and the C1 as my highlight color. And then I'm going to finish off with a yellow just on the top portion of the seat because the movie screen would be in front of them. So the movie screen would cast light onto the little cats as well as the seats. So I started off with a Y triple zero, but as I went throughout the card, that dried up and I don't have a refill for it. So I will eventually switch over to a Y11, which is not too far off from the Y000 anyway. So I went ahead and colored these three seats for my main characters here. And then I am going to color my little cats here and I'm coloring all of my cats. Well, I used a couple different color combinations, but I used them throughout the entire card. But I did keep this in here just to kind of show you how what color combinations I used. I will quickly go over that one area where I said that my paper was a little bit damp from my stamp being not dry. I just went over the lines with the EK Success journaling pen just to darken those up to make those match the rest of my images. Before I started or continued my coloring, I did trim down my panel a little bit because I wanted these to be a little bit more centered and this would give me less to color to be quite honest with you because the color coloring took a very long time. So again, moving on to the coloring of the cats here and I'm just going to keep a center highlight for each one of these. So I'm creating a shadow where their little ears are kind of tucked in their head, I guess. There's like a little line there. So I just use those lines within the illustration to guide me as far as where my shading should be. Adding a little bit of shading on either side of their little faces and a little bit up their ears and then underneath their faces or underneath their heads and if they're holding anything. So this one's holding a little box of candy and a drink there. So that would also cast a shadow on their bodies and just the bottom portion of their their hind legs or their back feet I guess I should say. So I start off with my lightest color to map out those areas and in case I make a mistake it's easily it's easy to cover up and also it gets the paper saturated so my blending becomes a little bit easier. Now this color combination will look terrible before it looks good so just keep that in mind if you decide to use this color combination. It's going to get a little bit ugly <laughs> before it gets to the way you want it especially when you bring in that y28 which is a gold color but it's kind of like an ugly gold color and once you go over that with the y26 it kind of brightens everything up so for their inside of their ears depending on what color of the cat they were i colored them a little bit different typically just use the same colors as i used for their little bodies as same for their little bellies for their pads of their feet, again, it really depended on what color I colored the cats. I was originally going to kind of add some patterns, I guess, to these cats, but I decided to keep them pretty plain because I have so much going on with this card that I didn't want to add stripes. I was going to add stripes as if some of them were tabby cats and others maybe calicos but i figured there's just so much going on that i wanted to keep the coloring nice and simple 
So for this cat, I wanted this to be a dark gray. So I'm switching over to my warm gray markers because I don't want this to blend in too much with the cool grays that I used for their seat. But I'm doing my shading the same way on either side of their face. And if they're holding anything, that would also cast a shadow. Going to make the little pads on this one's feet as well as the little nose black. And then I'm going to keep those warm gray markers out to use for the third cat here. However, I'm going to skip that W7. I'm going to start off with the W5 being my darkest color and use it very, very sparingly. I'll go ahead and blend that out with the W3, then the W1, same as I did for that middle cat there. However, I am going to leave some white space on this one. Now, I find that it's easier to color white objects with C markers, but warm gray markers, you can still do this, this pretty much the same way. Because the W1 is the lightest warm gray marker that I own, I typically go over the center area or whatever area is intended to stay white with my colorless blender just very quickly to get rid of those flick lines to make my my blending, I guess, a little bit more seamless so I don't see those flick lines. Now, some of my colors bled a little bit. Well, I can't even say they bled. I was just a little bit too messy <laughs> with their little paws there. So when I go in with my colorless blender, I'm also just gonna lay that down right onto her, his little paws to get rid of those areas where my warm gray Mar or the W5 marker kind of bled or I was just messy and I went over that area. Going to color the inside of his ears, the pads on his feet, as well as his nose with an R21. And then we're going to move on to the popcorn and the candy and the drink that these little guys are holding. Because these are gonna be the main focus on the card, I want to make sure that my coloring is a little bit better here than the rest of the card. So for the drink, I'm gonna make this red and white striped. So again, using that C3 and C1 to add my white areas here, leaving the center portion of the cup white so that it appears to be round. For the little popcorn container here, I'm just adding a little bit of shading on the top and bottom for both of the popcorn containers, but still leaving a little bit of white space as well. Then I'm gonna switch over to some R markers to color in that other stripe, I guess, of the cup. And doing the same thing here. I am gonna go directly in with my darkest color because I'm so afraid of my reds bleeding. Reds tend to bleed a little bit more, and when they do bleed, it's nearly impossible to get them out. So the less saturated the paper is, the less likely it will be to bleed. Your blending may not be perfect, but the color combination that I'm using here is a natural color or blending family here. So I really didn't have too much of an issue going directly in with my darkest color, but I am doing my shading the same way as I did with the cool grays, just adding a little bit of shading on the top and bottom of these little stripes on the popcorn container on either side of the cup and for the box where it's kind of tilted down. There's Frankie, he must know that I'm making a Newton card. <laughs> he gets a little gift every time I get something from Newton's Nook. He likes to play with a little tag that comes in the package. So for the little label on the popcorn containers, I'm also using this same red combination, just adding a little bit of shading to either side of that little oval. And then for the popcorn, I am just gonna use a solid yellow here. It doesn't really matter. You can do shading here, but because I'm using such a light color, I was too worried that I was gonna accidentally touch that red area and drag that out that I just went in with a solid color and kept it nice and easy. For these other two cats on either side, I am going to, obviously you can only see a very small portion of them, but I did keep this in here because I wanted you to see the color combinations that I used. So for this one off to the right hand side, it's gonna be more of an orange cat. Again, didn't add any patterns to his fur because I wanted to keep this nice and simple. And for the cat off to the left, I am gonna be using a the E20 markers for more of a brown cat. And I continued these, these same 
color combinations of these five cats throughout the entire card and kind of just spread them out wherever I felt like it. <laughs> and just trying to make sure that I didn't color two of the same kind of cat directly next to one another. So once the coloring of my front cats were complete, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the rest of this little movie theater here. Before I begin my coloring, I am going to go ahead and take that Y, Y, I originally started with the Y triple zero, then switched over to that Y 11, and I am just basically going to cover up the top portion of each one of these little seats. And this will kind of give me an undertone for when I do the rest of my coloring. You can certainly add this afterwards, but I felt like it was a little bit easier to add it now because that would way I, I knew that I had to preserve that highlight. Totally optional whether or not you wanna do this before or after, or you may wanna even do it both if you want a little bit more of a reflection there on the seat. So just gonna kind of show you briefly how I colored the rest of these because you can't really see too much of these little cats but I am like I said using some of the same color combinations sometimes I switched or I left out maybe the darkest color or the lightest color just to have a little bit of variation between the cats and they weren't all exactly the same and for the seats basically doing the same thing this time I really only have to highlight or outline the top portion of the cat's head and using the same C marker. So starting off with the C7, just outlining that cat, cat's head, I guess, and then the C5, C3, and then the C1 on the very top portion of that seat. And you can see how that yellow still shines through and you can add a little bit more if you choose to do that. So I just, like I said, scattered around and colored these cats with those same color combinations, switching it up here and there. And then we'll move on to the rest of the seats and did those the same exact way as well. Now, because I had cut off some of the card panel here, on the very top, it's hard to tell what is what. It's hard to tell what is the cat, what is the seat. So my general rule for myself is that if I can't tell, neither can the recipient of the card. So I just added a little bit of color for the cat and a little bit of color for the seats and just hoped that it made sense <laughs> to whoever is going to get this card. So just finishing up the seats here, and then I am going to take my 100 marker, which is the black marker, and I am just gonna color in the very bottom portion of the card here where it was kind of left white at this point. And this will kind of make it look as if the theater is black or dark. So next, once all of my coloring was complete, I am gonna go ahead and adhere this down to a black A2 note card, and it will leave a small border around all four sides, and this will kind of help darken everything up as well and make it look as if it is a dark movie theater. For the sentiment, I am going to create a sentiment strip here because I do not wanna to cover too much of my background. I am gonna take another piece of black cardstock here treat this with my anti-static tool, and then I'm going to use the Your Invited sentiment, stamp that down with my Versamark ink, sprinkle on some white embossing powder, and go ahead and heat set that. Once that was heat set and cooled, I'll go ahead and trim this down into a very skinny strip. And this is gonna go ac across the entire card, I guess, or at least the card panel. And I will go ahead and pop that up with my Scotch foam tape. I did lay this out onto my card panel here because I didn't measure. So I wasn't able to measure the sentiment strip either. So I kind of just had to line that up and snip the end off with my scissors. So pop that up with Scotch foam tape. And then for the inside of the card, I'm going to take another piece of Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock. I have all of mine pre-cut to an A2 size card. So I cut this down by a quarter of an inch on each side. I'm gonna go ahead and stamp out the larger sentiment here with black dye ink by Simon Says Stamp. This is my favorite ink. And then I will take the little popcorn stamp in the stamp set, switch over to that blackout ink, stamp a few of these, and again, just coloring these in solid. You can certainly do shading, but I kept it very, very simple. 
I'll go ahead and use that same Tombow Mono Multi Glue to adhere this to the inside of my card. And that is it. That is the card for today, guys. Thank you so much for stopping by. I'll leave all of the supplies listed below. Have a great day. Bye.